Hey gang, back with another video for you today. I've got a special guest here today to talk to uh -huh. us about their latest launch, Island Lush. It's Dimitri from Goldfield and Banks. How are you doing? I am good, Sebastian. Morning. <laughs> Morning. Good afternoon here. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. Yeah, busy, tired, stressed. Leaving in about a week and a half for a month, I'm gone to Europe. Wow. And then I'll see you in, in Milan, obviously, for Exxon's. Yeah, that's a huge tour you're doing. Yeah. Amazing. I leave When I leave, I leave for a month, usually. <laughs> that's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. It's best time to go as well. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So you have a new fragrance, Island Lush, which we're going to talk about. Uh, so, guys, if you're interested in hearing about Island Lush and a few other popular Goldfield & Banks fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, and this is uh, Dimitri from Goldfield & Banks. I know it's early for you. You said you just got into your uh, office. Yes. How are exactly. things going? Things are good. Things are good. Very busy. Extremely busy this year. Like, we've got lots of launches, lots of things oh. going on. So extended. you have more launches coming after Island Lush? I think I might have smelled something extra recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got something beautiful coming up this summer. Well, your summer. It's going to be winter here in Australia, but oh. overseas, um, you'll have this beautiful fragrance coming up. And I just, I can't wait to launch it because, yeah, it's just such a beautiful, feel-good fragrance. So I can't wow. wait. Wow. Yeah, I remember smelling it. I don't remember what it smelled like, but it smelled really pleasant from what I remember. I know. That's <laughs> what we hear. So people are already asking if the product is available now. So can they purchase it now? So we're like, oh, no, hold on. It's the 1st of June, not early. Oh. Will there be a preview at Exxon's? There will Packaging be. Packaging and everything? Yeah, of course. Of oh, course. okay, good. Can you show us here? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but if your eyes are good, like, I mean, you could see something. Let me move a little bit, actually. <laughs> what is back there? Things in the oh. back um anyway <laughs> okay let's talk about that later all right so when you started working on island lush did you know that you were going to create a fragrance that would be going into your botanical series fragrances how does how does the creation of a fragrance come about a hundred percent as you know sebastian we've got two collections we've got the native collection where every fragrance um features a key australian native ingredient um, and then we have the Botanical Series, which is a much smaller collection, very niche, extremely premium, with ingredients that are not necessarily native to the country, but ingredients that are harvested here in a very sustainable way, in a very organic way. Mm. So started with Silky Woods. Silky Woods is a fragrance that was launched um, two years ago, exactly, um, that is featuring Agrawood. And Agrawood is now available in Australia. I mean, it's been harvested and cultivated now for about 12 years which is okay years uh, but nobody knew about it even i didn't know about it until i i figured out i, I found out and um so we've got the most organic the most pure um agarwoods on the planet like it's it's insane and i recently had a, a lovely um a lovely meeting with uh, olivier crespe in, in paris and we were just discovering or rediscovering you know the the smell of this oud and, are you going to uh, be working with them? Do, sorry? Are you going to be working with them? Yeah, well, we're working on something quite interesting, actually. For wow, next year. the so, guy who made Angel. <laughs> mm, yeah, so it's quite interesting. I mean, and he's got a really, really I mean, I've, I've known him for many, many years. And um, he. we were just rediscovering this food and the qualities of this food and, the, you know, the, the, the characteristics of this food, which are very, very different than, you know, the ones that you find in Laos and Cambodia and all that. So the Australian agarwood is, is again, it's not native, but it's growing, it's growing here in Australia. And that's how I started building this collection with Purple Suede featuring lavender from Tasmania. But mm -hmm. the lavender, the DNA of the lavender is the same than the French lavender, Lavande du Pays. And so, again, these ingredients are not necessarily native to this country, but they are growing here in a, in a beautiful, you know, sustainable way. And Island Lush, we had the same story. I, during COVID, I had um, the privilege to, oh my God, I love this way. During COVID, I had the privilege to travel to Western Australia in between two lockdowns. Like it was crazy because all our states were in lockdown. And all of a sudden, Western Australia opened their borders with New South Wales, which is the state that I live in, Sydney. 
And um, so I traveled to Western Australia because I, I was on my way to visit Broome because I was working on Sunset Hour. And during that same trip, I went to visit my good friends at West Corp who process sandalwood in Western Australia. So they are specialists in, in sandalwood and they know everything about all the different grades of sandalwood and they they trade, you know, with the government and they they are, you know, they they liaise with all the local farmers of, of sandalwood in Western Australia. So they're they're a beautiful company and beautiful people to work with. And what was incredible is that um I visited them in the past, but I went back to to visit them and they had this massive warehouse, a huge, huge warehouse with sandalwood basically it's a factory you know it looks a bit like a factory but for safety reasons every single storeroom or every single i I would say um yeah it's like it's like a massive warehouse storeroom Mm, okay has dividers in metal so metal doors so whenever there is a fire that breaks out they've got these massive metal doors that would shut and would prevent the other storerooms from being um touched by the fire and being be, and getting fire okay. so you walk from one room to another and then in every single room you have different grades of sandalwood and it's incredible wow. experience wow. of that that massive warehouse where you see thousands of logs of sandalwood big huge logs and all these big containers and all these big bags and everything so and is there walk- an aroma in there of sandalwood yeah. does it smell yeah So this whole warehouse smells, of course, like sandalwood. And the funny thing is, so when you walk from one room to another, you discover different grades and different species of sandalwood. You've got the spicato, which is the native one. You have the album, the Indian one. And then you have, you know, a little bit. They have have species coming from Queensland and, you know, different things. But then they have this amazing South Pacific sandalwood, which is from Vanuatu. And you can imagine these huge warehouses massive storerooms smelling divine powdery ethereal you know with the sun shining through those windows and and i thought oh my god this is amazing this is so beautiful and i i i personally was very very um it lifted me up it was very uplifting to smell all these different grades of sandalwood and and interesting but it's a unique experience i have to tell you it's an absolutely unique experience when you have that because we often talk about you know lavender fields and you smell the lavender fields but in this case it's like massive warehouses and you really walk from room to room and you have this this fumes of sandalwood everywhere so it's sort of uh, during my trip to to broom when i was working on sunset hour i thought oh my god that quality of um, south pacific sandalwood the one from vanuatu had something that was different than any other sandalwood it was a bit more wild it was a bit more ethereal it was a bit more i, I don't know it's a bit more spicy and um so oh. I've got a little bit here and uh, so this is basically the color of that it's a bit like a like skin color to, uh, mm-hmm. and so i thought well maybe i uh, maybe i could integrate it in one of my future fragrances in the botanical series and that's how it actually that's when it actually started that's when the story started with So you had an idea that you would make a sandalwood fragrance for the botanical series, which is your third botanical series fragrance Mm. comes after the vanilla, the leather with, um, with the lavender. And now we've got uh, sandalwood with ginger and vetiver and vetiver. Okay. So it's a woody experience. So it's an absolutely woody experience. And I really wanted, you know, um, we worked with several perfumers. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, how did you decide to work with Emily Jacquin, perfumer yeah. Emily Jacquin? Well, we worked with different perfumers and I had a very precise idea of my fragrance. And whenever I create my fragrance, I have an absolute pyramid. So I know exactly what goes in top, what goes in, in the heart and what goes in, in the bottom of the fragrance. So you select the notes that go into the different... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're actually yeah. the perfumer then. I'm not the perfumer. No, no, no. But I mean, I've been in this industry for 30 years. So of course, we know I have I have a good knowledge of the fragrance industry. I have a good knowledge of ingredients. And so I knew. So exactly you knew that ginger would work really good with the sandalwood. A little bit of ginger, a lot of vetiver, a lot of leather, a lot of um, incense. I wanted to fragrance to have a lot of incense. So it's quite mm-hmm. a quite a, a powdery carnal and an absolute bountiful fragrance when you smell it it is so powerful it is the longevity and the 
rejection of the fragrance, as they call it these days, is enormous. So I always recommend to to use a little bit of the fragrance because it's it's profusion. It's a big it's, fragrance, yeah. It's a big fragrance, and uh, but it's so rich, and I wanted the fragrance to be rich, and that's how when we started getting the first submissions from the different perfumers. Um, you know, after a few submissions, you start to know who is actually getting the project, like who's who's on on my path and who's on my my way of thinking, um, and mm. who am I, my thoughts of this this new fragrance. And it was Amélie, Amélie Jacquin. She was in the right direction. She she was in the right direction. And then we worked and worked and worked. And I think they they started hating me at the end. I think <laughs> because I was <laughs> I was. Do you know when I have a fragrance in my mind and I know exactly how it's going to smell like, then then I go to the bitter end. Then I really want the result to be to be there. So I'm not. So you to... sent out your brief to multiple perfumers and mm -hmm. they were all trying, and then Emily Jacquin won the brief pretty much. Well, that's how it works. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it depends on the project, like with this new project for next year. I mean, Olivier, I mean, I've been wanting to work with him for many years and he's been wanting to work with. Goldfield and Banks for a long time and we you know it's a connection and it's it's yeah it's, it's I mean this is a, it grows organically sometimes it's it's an impulse it's it's very intuitive you know and the way you choose your perfumers but in this case with with Island Lush I thought you know what let's just spread it out and let different people work on it because it's an extremely um different project this, this, in this case, because that sandalwood, there's a lot of sandalwood fragrances on the market. Let's let's just be honest. Um, but I wanted this one to really reflect the wild nature of you know the, the the islands around Australia. Hence the name Island Lush, because it's yeah, that's not what I was going to get to. Why is it called Island Lush? Well, because it features ingredients that are coming from all islands around Australia. So mm. even not, even the sandalwood, the sandalwood is from Vanuatu. Which is a tiny island in the South Pacific, and then we have, you know, we have vetiver. We have ingredients from Indonesia. We have, you know, there's lots of little things. We have ingredients coming from Java, and so incense, and and so it's it's all about islands. And I wanted it, you know, that's what people expected something aquatic from the name, but it's not, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to. I was that. expecting something very green. <laughs> exactly. And it's not, I can tell you, it's very red. It's very, it's extremely rich and, and luscious. And by the way, the colors of the packaging, you know, the green and the red and the blue, yeah. they, they actually reflect um, the colors of the tarps on the islands in which they wrap the trunks of the trees and in which they wrap the, 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 the logs of the trees and where they are being transported. And I like the fact that, you know, those big plastic tarps bright colors, very islandy, very, very lush. And I don't think of islands when I think of Australia, because I think of Australia as being a big island anyway. So <laughs> now, now I, I should. Yeah. But we have so uh, many, and that's the richness of perfumery is that we tend to, especially the French brands, you know, they tend to always stick to the same ingredients that are from France and Italy, but we have around Oceania and around Asia Pacific so much so much we if you think of java and borneo and think of all the 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 the, the, the seeds and the pods and the, the 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 spices that we have i mean it's a very rich area when it comes to fragrances mm -hmm. and when it comes to ingredients I, I should say well you spoke about the packing uh packaging who does the artwork because i find it to be very beautiful especially this last I one it. i feel like i do it i create you everything do you do yeah so you're I the could, artist. Yeah, I'm the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, oh this yeah. This is you. This, this is, is nice. A hundred percent. Of course. Everything. There's nothing that is not created by me. Any visual, every word, every everything. <laughs> Damn. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. 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 The only thing that I don't I, that I can't do is like is the actual formulation, which I leave to the real artists. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are. Okay. I mean, and without them, we wouldn't be here today. And that's how I like to work. Yeah, I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is this was an exclusive to Harrods. I remember mm -hmm. when I was in Harrods uh, last uh, December and uh, January, I saw it there. Yes. Then when did it start 
becoming or going worldwide like just now like recently right just now. Yeah, yeah in february yeah in february it went global and um yeah so we 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 just launched it so it's a it's a it's for us it's a big moment it's a big launch and um it's very different than what people are expecting from goldfield and bank because a lot of a lot of our audience know bohemian lime sunset hour and you know all these beautiful uplifting fragrances in this botanical series we really go into the art of fragrance and into the art of you know the botanicals that are yeah rich and and have a, a true beautiful story to tell so mm -hmm. we're into more you know into more woody sand into more leathery and you know it's it's the the signature of that collection i would say is a smoky leathery side yeah so how does something like being exclusive to Herod's come about? Is that something that you decided early on with this particular mm -hmm. fragrance or do they reach out to you or? This is something that we discuss with our partners locally in the UK um, or even in the US. I mean, if there's an opportunity and sometimes they offer it, sometimes they request an exclusivity, sometimes, you know, a, a, um, a retailer like Harrods might smell the fragrance during a meeting and they might just go, oh my God, this is a great scent. We see a great opportunity for our customers. We want it exclusively for X amount of time. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's sometimes it's good. I mean, I know very often it, it, it upsets a lot of our other retailers, but sometimes it's, it's you know, we go back to the, to the nature of perfumery, which is, you know, all about exclusivities and, and it depends. I mean, we're not doing it every time, but yeah, in the occasion, okay. we're not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is your third botanical series. Uh, is there another one on its way? Do you have any ideas of when uh, and the yeah. next? Yeah, as a matter of fact, so we've got Purple Suede, which I absolutely love as well. Um, so we're currently working, as I said, with Olivier on, on a new fragrance for next year. Um, it hasn't so, been finalized at all. Like it's not finalized at all. So it will take a bit of time because we started working on it a while ago. And and I mean, it's it's um oh my god, what am I supposed? So to he's say? working on a botanical series fragrance. It's a botanical series fragrance. It is a sh should I say like it's it's a variation around silky woods. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is my favorite from your brand. Yeah. So it's a it's my a, ball yeah. is broken, so I'm using a tiny little sample oh, no. sample to show you. We have to get you one Silky Woods, which is our second bestseller worldwide. Actually, it's, mm. it's an incredible fragrance, and I feel that there is more to do with this fragrance. I I'm particularly excited about this this creation, and um, and you know sometimes instead of creating a, a totally new scent, I think it's nice for a designer to, to create variations around one fragrance. Um, I, I find it interesting, and especially now that we are working on this project, I find it very interesting to see, oh my God, you know, you, we don't want it to be 100% Silky Woods, but we want it to be different, and we still want to have the signature of Silky Woods. And it's a, it's a very complex process, and mm. he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a master, so he knows how to... <laughs> okay. how to get into my mind and, and to translate whatever I have. And, but yeah, I think we're going to get to a really, really beautiful result. Like work. Wow. Yeah. It will cool. take a bit of time, but it's yeah. Yeah. It's so, so Silky Woods is your second most popular fragrance then. Silky Woods. Yes, it is. Sunset Hour, Silky Woods, Bohemian Lime, Pacific Rock Moss. These are our four four pillars and you know in, in in our collection and people know them bohemian lime is so popular these days as well and we're very blessed and very happy and excited about that one. Oh, bohemian lime tell us a little bit about bohemian lime well you know my partner wears it and he's a flight attendant and every time he comes back on a flight he says to me the number of people that asked me what i was wearing and it's on every single flight which is great so it's a it's a great compliment getter I personally love this fragrance for different reasons. It really reminds me of my holidays in Byron Bay. It's, you know, we've got a lot of patchouli in the fragrance and there's a bit of vetiver and patchouli and a lot of patchouli in the fragrance. And um, it's very hippie chic. Mm -hmm. It's a bit bohemian um, and it's, it's quite gender neutral. I, I like the fact that it's that because we, we, we talk a lot with women and, 
you know, and in general, when it comes to fragrances, women do love um, fragrances that are slightly more woody and slightly more, I wouldn't say masculine because we, what's masculine, but um, those notes like cedar wood. And so women, not all women love florals and <clears throat> love, you know, ambery fragrances. So Bohemian Lime is all about um, finger lime or caviar lime. Uh, which is new on the market. And it was Givaudan who reached out to me and said, look, we have this amazing ingredient. Would you like to work with it? It's oh, Australian. Wow. Um, and so they have this small collection of Australian natives. And um, and I was, yeah, I was I was curious about it. And, and we started working on it. Um, and yeah, I just... It's I a just, fun, playful fragrance. Very uh, uplifting. And super long lasting. Like if yeah. this is probably in the citrus family, the most long lasting citrus fragrance I have come across. And I know a lot of fragrances, but it's, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's totally different than Pacific Rockmas, obviously, because Pacific Rockmas is, is an aquatic, it's an yeah. ar ar aromatic aquatic scent, which is beachy. beachy. So you don't really expect something very powerful, you know, Pacific Rockmas. Yeah. Expect something more, more subtle and more like a, you know, like a, a bit of a salty air breeze, something like that. Whereas um, Bohemian Lime, it's quite, um, it's quite alluring and it's and it's a very sexy fragrance. It's, I like it. Mm -hmm. So, who, which perfumer did you work with on Bohemian Lime? I worked with um, Karine Sartain-Bouin from Givaudan. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, you you launched that at the height of the pandemic, I remember. So it was nice, nice uplifting smell for. Such it was a nice smell and it was a daunting period because I really, we were all very scared because we didn't know what to expect with this whole COVID. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm launching this fragrance and I'm going to lose all my money. I'm going to lose my whole company because everything was shutting down. But on the contrary, I mean, the, the fragrance um, took off. Yeah. And basically one. the whole brand took off in that same period. And, and ever since we've been pumping. So, um, so it's great. It's, it's yeah, fantastic. that's good. Yeah, and it makes people dream because that's what we. That's initially my aim is that every single fragrance has to make a dream of this country, and it's transportive, and that's what perfumery, in my opinion, is all about. It's all about ingredients, the art of the ingredients, and it's about being transportive. You have to take people on a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your most popular fragrance, Sunset Hour. What is it with this fragrance that the ladies love? Sunset Hour. I don't know. I don't know. It's a huge chunk of our business today. Sunset Hour is just the most feel-good fragrance mm -hmm. that is out there. And I was a bit skeptical to launch a gourmand fragrance because, you know, gourmand can become quite, you know, overwhelming and can ten ten tends to be sometimes too sugary and too sweet. Mm -hmm. So I was very skeptical, but I wanted a gourmand. I, I, that was the initial idea is to do a gourmand, but to do it in a very chic way and in a very, you know, luxe way and to have Honorine Blanc uh, working on this project. It's quite special. Um, she knows how to blend, you know, florals with, with fruity notes, or should I say juicy notes because sunset mm -hmm. hour, just like juicy. So yes, let's straight the record right. It is not a fruity fragrance. It is a juicy fragrance. And in my opinion, okay. there's a massive difference. Like we're talking about, in this case, we're talking about peach and pear. You know, there's a pear accord and there's desert peach. So in my opinion, that is more juicy. When you when you talk to about fruity fragrances, in my opinion, it's anything related to raspberries and strawberries and, you know, all of that. So a juicy fragrance, I love it. And I think that's the key to the success of this fragrance is that juiciness is that you smell it, you wear it and you feel great. And even I wear it, I wear it in this season because it's summer in Australia and it's hot and it's humid actually. Mm. Um, and I love wearing it and it's a fragrance. I don't know. It's got, it's got the perfect amount of sandwood. It's got a perfect amount, a little bit of ginger. It's got the, the right amount of um, amber, vanilla, and all these these beautiful uh, shimmering and glistening notes at the top, and I don't it's know. It's very sparkling. Oh, it's sparkling! It's I just, like a champagne yeah. cocktail. Yeah, exactly. And also because I knew we were launching this fragrance when COVID was sort of at the end, so I knew. I know, of course, when you launch a fragrance, you know the launch launch date. 
Yeah. And I thought, well, by the time we launch Sunset Hour, COVID will be behind us, more or less. And so I really wanted this fragrance to be all about positivity. I, there was the, it's the only thing yeah. that came up in my mind is we want people to go to a perfumery and smell something that make them feel great and happy and positive and not going into those very heady notes of the niche industry and all of that. So I really mm -hmm. wanted fragrance to be about about smiling and, 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 and a great time. And that's the reason why it's it's so popular. Like every day I we sell so many of them. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like vacation in a bottle to me actually. Yeah. And you know what? Despite the color, this fragrance to me is a perfect gender neutral fragrance. It's got the right amount of you know this 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 um this ginger is is you know this is this beautiful balance between a little bit of um that pear accord again there is a pear accord which is which is quite green and at the same time like a lychee type of of scent and and yeah. to me, this, this is that's a true fragrance to to share a hundred percent we have a lot of men wearing it yeah. And, yeah we have a couple more classics also that we wanted to bring up some of your older releases wood infusion and white sandalwood tell us a little bit about these fragrances wood infusion believe it or not is in our top three in harrods mm. Mm -hmm. it's yeah extremely popular fragrance in harrods and also in the middle east so it is um it is a fragrance that i worked on with hamid hamid merati at Firmenich um, many years ago. <clears throat> and okay. the, fact he, the fact that he, and he's worked on the next fragrance for us that's coming up this year. So he, he um, I like him, I like his style. And the fact that he- I bet him, he's nice. And his uh, wife too. And his wife too, mm -hmm. delicious people, absolutely. But the fact that they, uh, that he, um, he could feature um, eucalyptus in, in a prestigious and um, quite, Oriental way, even though we're not supposed to use the word Oriental, it's it's quite um, there's a, it's a very um, um, there's quite a lot of of ambre gris in the fragrances, a lot of iris in the mm. fragrance. It's quite powdery, um, orange. We have a lot of oud in the fragrance as well, not the Australian oud, by the way. Um, and the fact that he blended with eucalyptus which refers to Australia and Fraser Island, which is an island that is, you know, it's the biggest sand island in the world. I, I really f smell in this fragrance the humidity and mm. the, the air that surrounds that island when you get there. And he, it, he was spot on with that perfume. Oh, spot wow. On. wow. It's one of the most popular fragrances in the collection after the four that I was mentioning before. What I like about it is the juiciness of the orange with the dryness of the oud and the woods. It's yeah. a great, great, uh, simple, easy to wear oud, I think. I know, I know, I know. And perfect to, to layer with white sandalwood because you were mentioning white sandalwood. Yep. Those That's two. the last fragrance we were going to talk about. Absolutely. You can, you can layer them. They're beautiful because white sandalwood has nothing to do with our new island lunch, by the way. White sandalwood is about the spicatum sandalwood, which is a native mm -hmm. straight sandalwood from WA, Western Australia. And um, it is combined with a Turkish rose and saffron. So if you have Turkish rose and saffron and sandalwood, you have a very Middle Eastern type of fragrance, and um, but very sophisticated and quite powdery and rich and round and and full of body. And in combination with wood infusion, the, the, that layering with the wood on top and you know the ambergris on top, that combination is absolutely perfect. It's it's a beautiful combo. Oh wow! I, yeah, yeah. I really oh, great. It. Yeah, hundred percent. So, what else do you have coming up around the corner from your brand? You already mentioned a couple of things. Something with uh, Olivier Crest, and you said there's something else coming in June. Well, I mean, can you give us yeah, a little more info June. on? So first of June, we have this beautiful new fragrance coming up, and I can't wait because it's I'm, I love wearing it already myself. Like I'm, I think the whole office here is is obsessed with it. All our retailers are already obsessed with it. It's um, it's 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 a first fragrance. How should I say? You know, we have a property um, up north in the tropics, all the way up in the tip of Australia. And it's my little haven, it's my little paradise. And we have in the garden 
um, in our gardens, we have lots of tropical flowers, as you can imagine. I mean, it's called the wet tropics, so you can mm. imagine the types of the type of flowers that are growing there. And um, we have a lot of these absolutely beautiful torch ginger, ginger lily flowers. Okay. They're absolutely oh, I remember now. I remember this fragrance now. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Yeah. And um, and I'm always so frustrated to see those flowers in my garden. And they look stunning. They're my favorite. They're beautiful. They, they're organic looking. They're probably the most beautiful looking flower on the planet. And I'm always, I was always, and still am, a bit frustrated when I go to my property. And those flowers, they don't smell. Oh. And, and for the first time, I thought, you know what, in my native collection, I can afford to do something a bit different. And um, and I created this this absolutely beautiful fragrance, um, with Hamid, by the way. Um, and we created, we, 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 for the first time, I really wanted to recreate a scent or create a scent, an imaginary scent that would represent the beauty of that flower um, by featuring a ginger, a native ginger from the north of the country, from um, the, the Atherton Tablelands. So it's um, it's a, a very interesting ambery ginger. Oh, and wow. You will be addicted to it. Sounds exciting. <laughs> promise you. Yeah. So, so that's it. So other than that, I mean, we've got a new fragrance up coming up next year. Um, around Silky Woods, we have a, a candle collection coming up. Wow. And then, Lots of goodies. Uh, and then we have Lots of beautiful other things coming up. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for doing this video. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great pleasure. Yeah. As always. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching this video. All the fragrances from Goldfield and Banks are sold on So Avant Garde, which I have a link in the info box. You can go visit and take a look. Uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, but other than that, I appreciate everyone tuning in and watching this video with uh, Dimitri from Goldfield and Banks. Sounds like they've got some really great things happening. I can't wait for to smell that new fragrance that you have coming out in June again, because I remember ginger as soon as you said it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> well, see you in Milan. Thank, thank you, you. So for everything. And thank you for all of you who are watching us for your support and your your endless support i should say and for all the love you've shared and are showing us since all these years and and yeah thank you so much thank you bye 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 sebastian see you in milan see you in milan bye bye